Hello teachers, good evening, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in tonight's video, I'll be uh, sharing to you the answer keys uh, for the first uh, part uh, before the entity. So of course you have to take the NTT self courses and uh, the new teacher training is the first one. So I'll give you the, uh, or I'll show you the answer keys so you don't have to, you know, you don't have to worry uh, before you attend your NTT training. So, of course, before you can attend your NTT training, make sure you finish all your NTT self course test. So, this uh, video is the first part. Uh, before we start, if you're new in my channel, don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell so you'll be updated with my latest uploads. So, let's start with the first one the introduction to TESOL. So we'll go directly to the question part. Okay. All right, so for this one, target language, this is the states where the main lesson is introduced. Activities, the states where the students get to utilize what they learned in the lesson. Review, the lesson states where previously acquired knowledge is reinforced and warm up the part of the lesson that serves to prepare the student and get them in the mood to study. All right, let's go to the next one. Get to know your student's name by putting this effort from the very beginning, you can gain instant respect. Next question. Always come to class with a lesson that is well planned and informative, as this shows your students that you have put in the effort to present a lesson that will be useful and interesting. Don't directly tell your students the answers. Ask them. A reciting will help them participate more actively. Summarize and condense key learning through an activity such as a group demo. Give feedback afterwards. Lower level students will understand actions better than long explanations and instructions. Don't forget to ask short questions to check for understanding. All right, let's go to need analysis. A need analysis should be conducted in the first lesson so that you can use the information provided in all future lessons by gaining information about current level ability skills and this can be conducted in a formal or informal way. Next, let's go to the next one. Uh, the answer is visual. Which kind of learning style would best categorize a student who cannot remember new vocabulary word without seeing the word written on the board first? The answer is visual. Performing a role play to practice dialogue which includes the new target language, choose the learning style, kinesthetic. Saying a song such as heads, shoulder, knees, and toes, or playing games such as Simon Says is tactile. Listening to a song which contains new grammar structures, auditory. Okay, let's go to the next. Alright, we can skip this. Total physical response TPR pertains to the use of body movements in teaching language or vocabulary concepts. The use of TPR is important when teaching low-level learners that it creates a link between speech and action, besides an effective language and vocabulary learning. The use of TPR when teaching words is especially helpful when you are teaching action words. Your student needs to read a particular sentence. How are you going to make him read it? Form a book using your palms and say, let's read. You want to teach the word eat. What is the best way to do it? Get a toy apple and say, I'm hungry. I will eat this apple and show the student that you are eating the apple and say, that is eat. All right, let's go to the next section. We're almost done, guys. A teaching aid is an object that a teacher used to enhance students' interest in learning. 
Being a 513 teacher, you will encounter a lot of young learners in class. Majority of these learners are visual learners. It is imperative that we augment the students' learning experience by using teaching materials that are not only interesting to see, but also helpful in making lessons more meaningful for the learner. Your student answer your question correctly. What is the best way to make him feel that he did a good job? Show him a star and say you did great. Here's your magic star. Ding! Your target group is artificial. How are you going to help understand a word? Show him a fake flower. Tell him this looks like a flower, but it's unreal. It is made of cloth or artificial. You have a student who does not seem interested to look at you in class and comes and plays with their staff stars. What can you do to get her attention the next time she books in your class? Wear a big, colorful headband and use a puppet to talk to the student. All right, next section. We're almost done. Okay. So for this one is the unnecessary words that only lengthen your sentences. That is incidental language. Even if we are talking to a low-level learner, we need to limit our word use. Correct grammatical structure should always be followed. It's the kind of learner that can't understand difficult words, difficult expressions, and long and complicated sentences. Low-level learner is the act of adjusting one's speech in accordance with listener's level speech, comprehension, grading, language. Keep it short and simple as the definition of KISS when teaching low-level learners. All right, let's go to the next. You have a level one student. You need to make her understand what she has to do in the game. How will you do it? Divide your instructions into shorter chunks and demonstrate model what she needs to do. You want to check if the student knows the character in dialogue. How will you do it? Circle the character. Say, look, who is he or she? You are going to give instructions for the warm-up song. What is the best way to do it? Say, it's singing time. Let's stand up and sing. All right, let's go. A vocabulary page in Python Talk lesson is where a learner learns new words. When teaching your students new words, it's important to teach the students to correct. When teaching pronunciation, low level learners say clapping is the best strategy to employ. One of the best strategies in teaching learning learners new words is using a visual aids of TPR. Concept and checking questions help the teacher check if the learner was able to understand the target word. All right, I'm almost done, guys. Nothing to worry. This will save you a lot of time. You're going to start your vocabulary page by doing the lead in. What is the best way to do it? Encircle the most important part of the picture students who is just the incorrect target word. Your target was basketball, but what you have at home is ping pong ball. What will you do? Print or show color drawing of a basketball and use it. You have just successfully taught the student the word enormous and you want to check with the students so what will they do? Show a picture of elephant and then ask the student which one is enormous. Excuse me, we're almost done guys, nothing to worry. We're almost done, okay. Almost there. Which one shows the teacher's guide? This one. Okay, this picture. Right here. Which picture shows the amount of time you have to finish discussing the page? This one, guys. Okay. Right, this one is where you will read conversations containing target words. This is done by doing a role play with the students. Dialogue page is an application of the things that the student learned in the vocabulary pages. Game page is where you can really start engaging the students in the lesson by singing and dancing to a fun warm up song. Warm up song page. Is where you welcome your student in your class and get to know each other. Introduction page is where you teach the students new words by following this six step word presentation vocabulary page. Is where you introduce the title of the lesson by creating connection between the picture of the page and the title of the lesson is done by doing a picture walk title page. It's a page that introduces the important activities in the lessons like the vocabulary page, game page, and dialogue page, transition page. The teacher's guide tells you what activities to do, when to do, and how much time you have for each and every page of the lesson. Okay, we're almost done, guys. Uh, 
At least how many corrections should you put under pronunciation? Three. At least how many corrections should you put under grammar syntax? Three. If this student did not mispronounce word during your lesson, what should you do? Write at least three new words relevant to the topic. If the student did not commit any grammatical mistakes during the lesson, what should you do? Write at least three expresses, expressions, and then relevant to the topic. Okay, that is guys, 100%. Okay, guys, as a thank you, don't forget to subscribe, share this video to your friends and family. I'll upload, guys, the part 2 of this tutorial for the NTT SELP course. So make sure you click the notification bell so you'll be updated with my latest uploads. Bye for now. I hope this video helps. Bye.